Hi, this is Scott with EMT and Fire Training, and today we're going to break down the question of the week. This week's question. You have been summoned to a residence where a 53-year-old woman has had a syncopal episode. You arrive to find her sitting on the couch, sipping a glass of water. She states that she is feeling perfectly fine now. At this time, a teenage girl enters the room with a monster mask in her hand. She tells you that she frightened her mother while wearing the mask. After administering oxygen to this patient, what would be the best course of action? What was the most likely cause of this woman's hypoperfusion? Okay, let's break down this question. We have a 53-year-old patient who had a syncopal episode. There can be many causes of syncope, so we need more information from the question. We find her alert enough to be drinking water and, and seating upright on the couch. She even tells us she's feeling just fine right now. We're going to get more information from the question. As we look at the question, we find that the teenage daughter admits to scaring her mother with a monster mask. So let's talk about syncope. Syncope can be defined as a sudden and temporary loss of consciousness. It is also sometimes described as fainting or passing out. Normally, syncope lasts for several seconds and then consciousness is regained. It occurs most often when a fall in blood pressure causes hypoperfusion to the brain tissue. According to the AHA website, syncope is a common problem that affects 1 million Americans every year. It also accounts for 3% of all emergency department visits and 6% of all hospital visits. Approximately one-third of us will have syncope at least once in our lifetime. Sometimes syncope indicates a life-threatening condition and therefore it is important to rule out dangerous causes. In our scenario, we have identified the most likely cause of our patient's syncope as being caused by a sudden scare. We would classify this as a vasovagal syncopal episode. A type of shock called psychogenic shock causes this. Psychogenic shock leads to syncope by causing dilation of the blood vessels that perfuse the muscles. This creates a sudden drop in systemic blood pressure, causing the skin to become cool and clammy, and causing the pulse rate to increase. It also causes a decrease in the amount of blood that is supplied to the brain, which then leads to lightheadedness, confusion, loss of consciousness, which we call syncope. This vasodilation is short term, and once blood pressure returns to normal, the brain is perfused enough to allow consciousness to return, and the syncopal episode is over. Since there can be potentially life-threatening causes of syncope, it is important to do a good assessment and encourage a patient to be evaluated at the hospital. This is especially important if there isn't an easily identifiable cause to their syncope. Let's look at the answer choices now and see which one fits best. Answer choice A. Do a focused physical exam on whatever injury she has. Neurogenic shock is caused by pump failure to properly oxygenate the brain. Doing a focused physical exam on obvious injuries is good, but a detailed head-to-toe exam would be more appropriate. Anytime a patient has experienced loss of consciousness, we should do a systematic, full-body assessment to identify any potential injuries that may have occurred. The second part is also incorrect. Neurogenic shock is not the cause, nor is it a case of pump failure. Neurogenic shock primarily comes about as a result of trauma to the brain or spinal cord which then impacts the nerve impulses that help to maintain blood pressure. It causes widespread vasodilation and leads to shock as the container of the cardiovascular system gets much larger than the volume of the fluid and thus drops the pressure in the body. Answer B. Have her lay down for a while until her blood pressure is back to normal. Increased vasoconstriction during the fight or flight response causes the body to shunt blood away from the brain. Well, this patient is already exhibiting signs of normal perfusion and most likely does not require being placed in a shock position or in a supine position. The fight or flight response does not cause vasoconstriction of vessels that perfuse the brain. Blood flow is actually enhanced to the brain as well as to the muscles in preparation for the fight or the flight that needs to occur. It is constricted in areas of less importance to immediate survival, such as the intestines and the skin. Answer C. Do a rapid trauma assessment to make sure she was not injured in the fall. Her sympathetic nervous system caused widespread vasodilation. A rapid trauma assessment is a quick head-to-toe evaluation of the patient to identify injuries. We don't know for sure that she fell, but any time a patient experiences loss of consciousness, we need to assume that they did fall and evaluate accordingly. This would be an appropriate way to manage this patient. As we talked about earlier, the patient experienced widespread 
vasodilation, which led to her syncopal episode. This was caused by the sympathetic nervous system sending the signal to the blood vessels to dilate. Answer D. Help her to the ambulance for transport and evaluation at the hospital. Her nervous system reacted to the scare by increasing vascular pressure and pairing oxygen transport. While helping her to the ambulance for transport and evaluation would be an appropriate way of managing this patient. It is always good to encourage patients to seek further evaluation, especially if we find anything else that may lead us to believe the syncope was not just isolated to being scared. Underlying cardiac problems can predispose someone to syncope, and being scared could cause the cardiovascular system to be placed under pressure and exacerbate the problem. The second part of this answer is wrong. The nervous system did not react by increasing vascular pressure, it decreased it. Also, an increase in pressure generally doesn't cause impairment of oxygen transport. Well, that's it for me for this review of the question of the week. Be safe out there.